Hi everyone, my name is Kaukab Abid and welcome to the SEO Fundamentals course. In this course, I'll be teaching you the fundamentals of search engine optimization with a heavy focus on execution. This course is broken down into four modules plus this video, which is more of an introduction to the course as well as in search engine optimization. And in this video, we'll go over the basics of search engine optimization and cover things like what it is, why it is important, and how it works. You will then move on to module one, which is on keyword search. Throughout these lessons, I'll show you how to find keywords to target that can benefit your business. It will also set the foundation for the next module, which is on page search engine optimization. And in this module, we'll be talking about optimizing your pages to rank for those keywords. And then the next module will, will be on the link building. This is one of Google's most prominent ranking signals, which has proven to contribute to higher rankings in search. And finally, we'll finish off the course with the basics of technical SEO, which will mostly be about best practices and website maintenance. All right, let's kick, kick things off with SEO basics. We'll talk about what search in op engine optimization is, why it is important, and how Google works. SEO stands for search engine optimization, and it's the process of optimizing content to be discovered through a search engine's organic search results. Now let's talk about how they work. If you're completely new to SEO, then it's easiest to think of search engines as libraries. But instead of storing books, they store copies of websites and web pages. So when you search for a query, the search engine will then look through all pages in its index and try to re return the most relevant results. And uh, SEO helps demonstrate to search engines that your page is that particular result. Now you might be thinking, why should I focus on SEO when there are so many other marketing mediums available? Well, there are three major things that attract marketers to search engine optimization. And in my opinion, these three things make SEO the best traffic source. Number one, unlike paying for ads, search traffic is free. Number two, organic traffic is typically consistent once you're ranking high. Whereas other mediums like social media and email marketing often result in traffic spikes that usually end up fading to nothing. And it makes sense because uh, social media networks are designed to surface fresh content. And emails often get marked as read, forgot, forgotten, or land in the spam box. Whereas search traffic is a result of users actively searching for information, and the number of searches for a given topic is typically consistent month to month. And number three, you have the opportunity to reach massive audiences uh, that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. In fact, there are 8.5 billion searches per day. This is why search engine optimization is an $80 billion industry. And that's why marketers from all walks of life are adopting and pursuing it. To, uh, and everyone wants their business to get discovered and SEO is the perfect way to do that. Now let's talk about how Google works. And there are two parts of it. The first is crawling and indexation. These two things are what actually allows Google to discover web pages and create their search index. So to actually attain information, Google uses crawlers, also known as spiders, which gather publicly available information from all over the web. The spiders will start crawling from a list of known URLs to what they call seeds. Then they follow the hyperlinks on those pages and crawl those newly discovered pages. And this process goes on and on, allowing, allowing them to collect a ton of information. Then they take all of this data back to Google servers, which they add to their search index. And that's what people like you and I are searching through when we key in a query in, in Google. Now, if you, if, you, if you were to search for something and Google returned every result that mentioned your words on the page, then you then end up with really bad results. This brings up to the second part, which is Google's ranking algorithm. 
Google has hundreds of ranking signals and, and they make tweaks to their algorithm at least 500 to 600 times per year. So to be frank, no one knows exactly how their algorithm works. But they have given us clues and some guidelines to improve our understanding. And I, I do want to cover a few of the most important factors that you will need to understand from a fundamental standpoint. First are backlinks. Backlinks are links from a page on one website into another. And Google has said on their How Search Works page that if other prominent websites link to a page that's proven to be a good sign, that information is well trusted. The easiest way to understand the value of a backlink is to think of them as votes. When a page receives a backlink, it's essentially another website vouching for the content on the page. And the more votes you get from credible sources, the higher the trust. And some have studied the effect of backlink on search traffic and found a clear positive correlation between backlinks from unique websites and a page's organic traffic. Second is search intent. Search in intent represents the reason behind a searcher's query. And if you think of a Google, Google's goal for search, their job is to return the most relevant results for any given query. So with that said, you can discover search intent simply by looking at the top ranking pages for the query you want to rank for. For example, if you search for slow cooker re recipes, you'll see that the results are mostly blog posts with a list of slow cooker recipes. So if you try to rank uh, a product page where you are selling a slow cooker, you won't be matching search intent and therefore you won't rank. Now, if we change the query to just slow cooker, you'll see the dominant types of pages are e-commerce category pages. So if you try and rank your blog post of slow cooker recipes, then you pro probably won't rank because you're not matching the search intent. This is a critical concept to understand. And I'll share a simple three uh, point checklist later in the course that you can use to determine search inten intent for any query. Uh, and that will be covered in the next module as well. Third is content depth. Search engine engines are made up of computer programs. So they, they can't actually read and understand text like you and I would. Nevertheless, Google has poured billions of dollars into creating sophisticated technology that understands content to a certain degree, but it's your job as a content creator to provide context about the subject. For example, if you look at the top ranking pages for, uh, for, for, for a query of how to drive a car, you'll find that they talk about things like passing your, seat, your seatbelt, familiarizing yourself with the gas and brake pedals, adjusting your seats and mirrors and other things that a first time driver may not know. Basically, you want to be able to answer the search query the best you possibly can. And naturally, it should lead to content that has depth. Now it's important to note that depth doesn't always translate to length. For example, a topic like how to turn off iPhone 12. It doesn't need to and shouldn't be long in fact. So uh, the top ranking page is only 185 words, but the content itself solves a user's query from start to finish. So this is it for the fundamentals of SEO. And now it's time to move on to the keyword search module, which will be covered in the second video of the course.